Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a very special video indeed on two of the same type of knife. Uh, if you've seen the title of the knife and you see these cases, you'll know that these are David Kulis knives. Who is David Kulis? He is a part-time knife maker and full-time first responder uh, who works in the Chicagoland area. This is special to me because my family now lives in Chicago. I don't live there right now, but I have a personal connection there. I lived there for the four years of medical school. I may end up in that area ultimately. So it's special to me to see a guy coming out of the Chicago area making American-made knives. Now, this knife that you're going to see today is the Spectre. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the absolute showstopper edition right here. This Turkish twist Damascus and copper crazy thing right here, the David Kulis Spectre. So I've actually had this knife for a considerable amount of time uh, while my buddy Anchor has been patiently awaiting for me to make these videos. He also allowed me to borrow the Scott Cook Lock Saw and the Michael Raymond Starlet. So all three of these knives, truly spectacular pieces. Thank you to Anchor so much. He goes by Shy Timber on Instagram. But not only have I been able to experience this knife and had uh, sort of a learning experience with David, he's also been extremely generous to go ahead and send a second knife, which will actually be offered up for a charity lottery on my Instagram in the coming future. So I wanted to go ahead and show these knives off and show you exactly what's going on. Again, David Kulis, part-time maker. These knives are sort of in the first 20 to 50 knives maybe that he's been making, and he's getting better with each one of them that he's making. I saw this knife in particular on his Instagram one day, and I showed it to my friend Anchor, who subsequently purchased it, and now I've been sitting with it and getting to understand it a little bit better over time. So I've got both of these on the screen. Let's go ahead and get some vital signs on the Spectre right here. Up front, we have a blade that is three and a half inches in overall length. It is, we are looking at eight inches of overall length, give or take. You've got a handle coming in at about four and a half inches with an effective grip, grip area of about 3.8 inches right there. Uh, the weight on these guys, there are substantial pieces of carbon fiber, but they're titanium frame locks. This one features some copper pieces, making it 7.7 .7 ounces. This more standard titanium bolstered uh, edition right here comes in at six ounces. So a bit of a substantial knife. Uh, and you'll notice that also in the hand because of the thickness of this knife. That's one of the things that I honestly enjoy about it very much. It comes in at 0.68 inches in thickness. And so that's not messing around. This goes into a category of knife that's purposefully thick so that it fills the hand. And this is something that uh, is very, very special about this knife. So, what is the purpose of the Spectre? This is David's take on his on a tactical folder, uh, and he wanted it to have a nice, usable, but aggressive blade shape and a very ergonomic handle, and he has achieved that here. Let me get these guys better in frame. Let's go ahead and bring out another couple of knives for a quick size comparison. Up top, I'm going to put a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Down below here, we are going to have a pair of three. So you can see these knives fit closer to the pair of three size profile than really the pair of two. It's a bit of a smaller overall compact size. I really like the size on this knife. He offers a few other sizes in his other knives, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. So, But he targets around the 3.5 inch blade size more commonly. So let's go ahead and break these knives down anatomically. I want to start out with this guy right here. And we're going to start with this crazy blade of this Turkish twist Damascus right here. This is a very unique Damascus steel that he was able to get his hands on, and then he was able to blue it uh, in the Bernie, Bertie Reitveld style technique, uh, and it made these amazing hues of reds and browns and coppers and bronzes and golds uh, and purples and greens, and if you look really closely, it's got all these colors in there. Uh, absolutely beautiful blade right here. It is a harpoon sort of drop point with a recurve, 
hollow ground. Uh, this is not going to be the finest slicer in your co collection, but it was never intended to be for in the first place. This is really a created uh, a knife that is created by a guy who's trying to make a beautiful, fun, and uh, just very functional overall piece. Uh, you're not going to. This is not going to replace your Spyderco Paramilitary II but it will work for you if you want it to. Uh, certainly with a regular Damascus blade or a more uh, standard blade steel, perhaps you would use it a little bit more, but this shows his, his artistic extreme uh, in terms of the knife builds that he can do. So uh, this features a little bit of jimping here on the ramp. Uh, it's sharpened all the way back to the lip right here. Uh, this area right here can function as a forward finger choil. It is certainly large enough to fit your hand in there for some finer work. Uh, this is slightly different on each one of his knives. Again, he's a newer custom maker and he's still figuring out the details right here. Uh, again, this knife is going to be offered uh, for charity lottery coming up soon. Let's go ahead and move back to the pivot. This guy runs on ball bearings and is very, very smooth. He has a very crisp an aggressive detent and so this blade flies out of the handle I absolutely love it uh, you know full disclosure on the situation I had a small issue with the detent on this knife but I and I sent it back to him and he was able to fix it right away you know the detent ball fell out and that was something that happens on some knives and uh, you know he apologized profusely he paid for it every step of the way I don't get upset when little things like this happen with knives if a custom maker is very quick to pick up the tab and go ahead and fix whatever issue it is and he absolutely was on it he fixed it he was very communicative and so I want to be fully upfront that there was a small issue but also let you know that he is a nice guy very humble and very serious about his work and he wants his customer to be happy so if you have an issue he will address it and take care of it with the quickness so uh, props to him for that uh, this thing drops closed very nicely. This is not my uh, knife and I haven't been using it quite as much uh, as I would if it were mine, but it already drops closed under its own weight. Beautifully centered right there, very nicely done. Nice crisp lines. The, uh, the bolsters really match up with the handle quite well. The blade fits in with the, the handle very nicely. Notice the curved nature of the bolsters. Let's take a look visually at the pivot area right here. You can see the Steve Kelly style titanium screw with pivot collars going on right there. Those are, yeah, those are carbon fiber pivot collars going on right there. Very cool to match the carbon fibers on the handle. This is uh, stippled copper. Notice the stippling pattern going on here and here. Really beautiful work. You can see that he's done a sort of yin-yang type of pattern with the stippling as it continues onto the carbon fiber. Let's just go ahead and move back to the handle and look at this amazing contoured marbled carbon fiber featuring some of the stippling there. You can see it here on the handle. Let me get a good angle for it. Really, really cool finish work on this knife. Very beautifully done. It's got the Damascus clip as well as the Damascus floating backspacer with the integrated lanyard hole. Really amazing construction. This knife actually won first place, best in show at uh, maybe it was like the Great Lakes uh, knife show or something. There is an award associated with this knife. It won best in show when he showed this off recently in the last couple of months, and it deserves it. This is a very, very nicely done knife. Uh, you can tell that he is newer to the knife game, but the attention to detail is absolutely there. Let's take a look at his uh, companion right here. This one is done in a Damascus blade. This looks like either a Mike Norris or a Chad Nichols design. Maybe Chad Nichols. Again with the recurve harpoon drop point. This one was a bit more of an experimental knife. Notice that there is not quite as perfect of a transition to the... Uh, plunge grind and the edge uh, bevel right there. This one features blackened titanium screws and blackened titanium bolsters. Uh, again with the contoured marbled carbon fiber, blackened titanium black backspacer and clip featuring bronze. There's an engine turning on the inside. I didn't show you that on the other one. There's some brilliant engine turning going on on the inside of the frames here. Very nicely done. So David Kulis is a maker that people need to be looking out for. 
He is new to the game. He's only made a few knives, but if this is what he's doing with his initial knives, I'm already a huge fan. I think he has a very good eye for the overall design of the knife. I think that there are some areas where he will continue to improve and we will see the fit and finish and consistency uh, improve and, and change as he continues to go along. And I think you guys should check him out. I'm gonna, I, I highly recommend that you follow him on Instagram. Go ahead and check him out at David Kulis Knives on Instagram. I'll leave that link down below. And you can also uh, go ahead and follow me. If you like this channel, go ahead and click like and subscribe to the YouTube channel here. Follow me on Instagram as Dr. Frunky. Uh, I'll leave a link to his website down below as well. And as always, guys, thank you for watching and take care.